Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to make a, a traditional bread pudding. I had a request to make this and I, I have made it uh, eight or nine years ago but I wasn't doing videos at that time. Now bread pudding in the UK is not the same as bread pudding in the United States. In the UK bread pudding is bread with lots of mixed dried fruits in it, some spices in it, um, and uh, milk and eggs, and it's all mashed together um, and put into a pan and baked, and it's a nice thick doughy pudding. The one in the United States is more akin to what we in the UK know as bread and butter pudding, and that's slices of bread in a sort of creme anglaise which is baked in the oven. But anyway, so I'm doing the, the traditional one. It's a very hearty pudding, can be served warm, can be served cold, um, but particularly at this time of year as we're moving into autumn, it's nice and filling and hearty. So um, before I go into onto the ingredients, let me just say I can hear my fridge humming. I hope it's not coming through on the microphone, but if it does, I will try to adjust it a little bit when I edit the video. So I'll go on to the ingredients. And for this, I have eight, uh, 500 grams, which is one pound, two ounces of uh, bread, which I have torn into pieces. Now you can use white bread, wholemeal bread. You can use any bread you want, basically. Tear it into pieces. Um, it's difficult to give a, a cup measurement because it depends on um, how small you tear the pieces, but it's, it's one, uh, one point, one pound two ounces. The same weight, four cups, 500 grams, one pound two ounces of dried mixed fruit, 85 grams, two thirds of a cup of mixed chopped peel, five, uh, five grams, one and a half teaspoons of mixed spice, two medium eggs, large in the USA, 150 grams, uh, three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar, 100 grams, seven tablespoons of melted unsalted butter, 600 milliliters, two and a half cups minus four teaspoons of milk. I have the zest of one lemon, three grams, half a teaspoon of salt, and I think, oh, and 25 grams, two tablespoons of demerara sugar or raw cane sugar. That's for sprinkling over the top of the pudding before it goes into the oven. So I set that to one side for a moment. And the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, start to mix some of the dry ingredients into the bread. So I'm going to sprinkle my salt in there and my mixed spice. and my fruit. And I should say that uh, in my case, the, the mixed dried fruit is sultanas, raisins, currants, and uh, mixed peel. But of course I have more mixed peel to go in as well, which is there. But you, if you have other things, if you've got some cherries, you can put those in, some dried apricots, basically whatever you want. So that's all the, uh, fruit in there and I think I'll put the zest of my lemon in as well at this stage. Um, I'm just breaking up the sticky mixed peel. I put my lemon in, lemon zest. And then I'm going to simply mix that around and of course a lot of the fruit will fall to the bottom, but we will sort that out in a minute. And with that just roughly mixed, I'm going to pour in my 600 millilitres of milk. Thank you. 
and I'm going to use my hand and I'm going to squeeze the mixture in my hand turning it over basically until everything is mixed together and coated in the milk. And the crusts of the bread, if you have any crusts on your bread, will soften just the same as the main part of the bread does. That's fine. So as you can see, that's all softened up quite nicely into a big mush. And what I'm trying to do is to make sure that there's no massive clumps of bread little pieces separate still will be fine and that's good like that so i'm going to leave that for 15 minutes and that's just going to let that liquid absorb a little bit more then I'll come back and we'll mix the remaining ingredients in. And as that sits there for 15 minutes, I'm going to preheat my oven to 180 degrees Celsius, 160 Celsius with a fan, 350 Fahrenheit. And I'm going to line an eight inch square cake tin uh, with parchment paper. You can simply grease it if you want to, but I'm going to line mine with parchment paper. Uh, that will be ready to take uh, this thick mixture ready to make our bread pudding. So I'll come back when the 15 minutes is up. It's been 15 minutes and I have beaten my egg now and I'm going to put my sugar into it. I'm just going to mix that through because I'm then going to pour that into my bread and fruit mixture. So that can go into the bread and fruit. And I'm going to stir that through to get it mixed in. And I'm going to use my Danish whisk, which I think will do it quite nicely. And that's good. And that's good. So then I'm going to put my melted butter in as well. And mix that through. And that's all there is to it really so that needs to go into my prepared cake tin
and that's just about all of it. So I'm going to spread that out and that just about fills this tin. You could use a deeper tin if you wanted to. I've leveled that off as you can see so then the last thing to do before it goes into the oven is to sprinkle over the demerara sugar and that's good like that so I'm going to put that into the oven and I'm going to bake it for an hour and a half 90 minutes if it seems to be browning too much on the top as it bakes, I will cover it for the last 30 minutes or so with aluminium foil. But after 90 minutes, I'll take it out of the oven, I'll test it with a skewer, and it should come out relatively cleanly, because it should be cooked all the way through, but it will still be very stodgy. This is a stodgy pudding, remember. Um, I'll take it out of the oven, and I'll leave it in the tin for 15 to 20 minutes, then I take it out of the tin and put it onto a wire rack uh, to cool a little, and then I'll come back and I'll cut it and we'll have a taste of it. I baked the bread pudding for an hour and a half and it baked very well. It rose up slightly above the top of the pan um, and it browned nicely on top with the, the demerara sugar. So I took it out of the oven and I left it for 10 minutes, then I tipped it out and I've cut a few pieces off it. I'll show you what it looks like. So uh, this can be cut into about 16 pieces of about two inches square, basically. Um, so it's, it's baked up quite nice and it's nice and uh, dense and stodgy, as I said, and it's best served warm. Um, but I'll have a taste of this piece. Mm. that is just so good lovely and fruity obviously with all the dried fruits and the uh, mixed peel in got the lovely mixed uh, spices as well and firm on the outside and on the top but nice and soft and squidgy uh, in the centre very very good um, now I should say that this is an ideal use for um, this recipe for using uh, stale bread if you have stale bread um, rather than using it for making toast or croutons or something you can use it for making a bread pudding and it's a very filling uh, dessert served warm you can store it in the fridge you can also cut it into squares, wrap the squares tightly in plastic wrap or in aluminium foil and you can freeze them and then reheat them or warm them through before you actually eat them. So that's going to be it for this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen there'll be an eye that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe. And I'll put a link below the video as well. And I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.